just um, I'll just toss this rope around now. Trailer loading has a number of functions. Obviously, we need to be able to get our horse onto a horse trailer or a horse float to be able to take it somewhere. But also, it's a huge part of developing a horse's uh, relationship with a human. It takes a lot of trust for a horse to willingly go into a horse float, uh, to mentally and emotionally go into the float and not just physically. And if we can develop this type of trust and this type of communication and have the horse go into the horse float with a good taste and it's in his mouth, that's um, a big step forward in our relationship with our horse. So this horse has, been, has come here as a restart because he's been bucking his humans off and he's actually become quite a problem. But before um, Mark would actually try and ride this horse, he's going to make sure the horse can pass a number of tests and one of those is trailer loading. So can he cause his horse to trust him enough to willingly follow his direction into a trailer with a good taste in his mouth. Now notice just there, I got within about 15, 20 metres of the horse trailer and the horse's ears, his eyes, he froze a little bit in his body language, a little bit closer. So it's a gradual thing, it's a approach and retreat from the trailer. Disengage the hindquarters for control. Steady pressure to direct my horse. Then use rhythmical to cause the horse to accept my tools. Approach the trailer and just see if there is a change in the horse's body language. That was quite a good acceptance. Leave the trailer. That time through, you could see the horse lick his lips as he passed the horse float. You could hear his breathing change slightly. A fun little thing to do to prepare your horse for the trailer is to send them over, through, even under some obstacles. So what I'm going to do here now is just see if I can send my horse over the cavaletti, walk him over the timber box and send him in and out the drums. So as Mark mentioned before, Horses are innately claustrophobic. If they get trapped in a small space, it means that their ability to flee danger has been removed. And the pressure can come from any direction. It can come from underneath the horse, above the horse, or on either side of the horse, behind the horse, or in front of the horse. So like putting a horse in a crush or a horse float or a set of racing barriers is a very difficult situation for a horse that it needs to be well prepared for. If a horse gets confident at stepping over things, such as a cavalletti or a pole, that's a little step on the way for the horse being confident about stepping onto the tailgate. If a horse couldn't even step over a cavalletti, his chances of stepping onto the tailgate would be pretty slim. What's pretty good here is the horse has knocked the cavalletti a few times, but he hasn't panicked about it. It doesn't bother him if he he rattles it or, or knocks it, so that's a pretty good sign. The cavaletti in itself isn't bothering him that much, he's more bothered by the fact that there's a human on the end of his rope. Again, we have to try and keep his nose straight so that he doesn't leave instead of back up. As soon as there's energy out in front of him, he wants to turn his nose and leave. So we're going to keep tipping his nose back there, reward that. Now, nice big lick there. The reason why this horse, one of the reasons why this, this horse is, is a bit of a difficult horse, oh, he's not difficult, in his own world he'll be a survivor. In his world he'll be a survivor. There's no way a lion or a tiger would eat this horse. <laughs> but in our world, we say horses have vices. 
I don't believe horses have vices, but for a horse to be our partner, they've got to be able to do at least seven movements. And the seven movements are, can your horse stand still and accept, accept what the human has to offer? Acceptance. As you can see, this horse is quite a reactive horse. And I'm not, I'm not push, pushing any buttons here. I'm taking things nice and slow. Can the horse stand still and cope? Can the horse go forwards? Can the horse go backwards? Yes. Can the horse go to the right? Yes. Can he go to the left? Yes. Can he go over, up and down? Disengage the hindquarter. Good job. Back around. That was pretty nice. As the energy's coming up, he's getting better able to cope and stay in tune with Mark. So he's able to go over the jump, yield his hindquarters and keep his feet soft. So that's a bit of a change from where he started. So gradually this horse is getting more able to deal with higher and higher levels of energy. We can send a horse over something like this timber box we have here. He's going to be better prepared for stepping onto the tailgate. The tailgate's going to make a bit of a noise and have a hollow sound to it when the horse steps on. And sometimes that noise alone can bother the horse. So getting the horse good at stepping over things like this box with all four feet will improve his confidence. So rather than just being a trick, can I get my horse to stand on a box? It actually has a useful purpose. Also gets them better at balancing and learning to shift their weight so they'll be less likely to scramble when they are on the horse trailer. They have to feel their way with their feet. If you have a horse that's difficult to shoe, this can also really, really help the horse learn to balance. It's interesting. Now, as you can see, this horse is going over the box, but he's a bit funny with his back legs. And basically all this is here is the tailgate of a truck or, or a trailer. So what I would like this horse to be able to do is to accept walking up this timber box, walking over it, and then even standing on the box. It's really good preparation. And you don't need a box at home, guys. You can walk over a timber or some planks of timber, over a tarp, you name it. But just cause the horse to see if the horse can actually Except, whoop, and don't forget, I'm going to display leadership here. As the leader of the herd, and I've got to become his leader, if I ask the horse to stand on the box, as long as he tries for me, I'd be happy with that. Big try big reward by leaving the horse alone. In the teaching phase, when we're teaching a horse something new, we always want to try and reward the slightest try. So even though Mark's goal is to get all four feet on the box, if he were to get really direct line and try and get all four feet straight away, he would end up just destroying the horse's confidence. If he can ask the horse to go with one foot, then two feet and reward each step, eventually four feet won't be a problem and the horse will be more willing to try. Now this big horse here is going to accept the box. I'll ask him to walk over the box. Come on. Big try. 
But don't push through me, please. Come on, I'm your leader. Don't push through me, please. So all the different directions the horse can go in, this horse seems to have the most trouble going backwards. Going backwards and moving his front end in isolation, which pretty much indicates that he really pushes his weight forward onto his shoulders and uses them defensively. Now this time, can the horse stand on the box? You've got to ask yourself the question, did the leader ask the horse to stand off the box? If you ask the horse to go onto the box, just be careful they don't try and change your focus like this and try to test our leadership. Thank you very much. Horses by nature will try and change our focus. It's a survival mechanism. Horses being a prey animal, humans are predators. Horses for survival, for evolution, they need to try and change our focus. And if we show poor focus and poor leadership, there's no way these horses will follow you. Especially horses like this guy. He's a special horse. Usually this, the so-called most difficult horses are the special ones. Why should he go into a trailer? Why should he allow someone to ride him? We can use some drums to simulate a trailer. Can I just send my horse through the drum, drums, Disengage the hind quarter. See how he hurried as he went through the gap. Ask the horse to don't push on my space. So he's showing that he wasn't that confident going through the gap because he had to speed up to get through there. He's going through the gap and then he's escaping. It's showing he doesn't feel very comfortable in the tight space. So, so far he's gone over things, okay, but between isn't so good. That was a little better. That's about the width of a bay in a horse trailer. Can he go through the gap, stop, yield and wait for further instructions without running off? So he needs to go through the gap, yield his hindquarters, stop and wait for further instructions. Go through the gap, yield, stop, Keep his feet still and wait for further instructions. Righto. So he's going through that gap quite nicely. Now with the um, with the pole uh, with the drums. Another little test may be, can we send the horse over the drums? Direct my horse around. And disengage the hindquarter. That was a pretty good try. 
lowering his head like that, he's showing some acceptance, he's starting to think and he's starting to see Mark as his leader. And that's okay if he just steps over them. The main thing is he's willing to have a try. And it's good that he's not bothered when his feet bang on the drum. So I'm going to progressively come closer to the trailer and see if my horse will squeeze between myself and the trailer. Yes. There's one little test I want you to do before you actually put the horse onto the trailer. And you would have seen this in the halter and lead rope tape. Can we go sideways on the circle? Can we hold our horse at close range and just ask our horse to move in a sideways on a circle and rub him to a stop. The reason why we do this, if we apply some pressure at the horse, I want to see the horse move off the pressure in a sideways motion. So in a sideways motion, can we ask our horse to go sideways on the circle. The horse is actually having more trouble with the feel on the noseband of the halter than moving his feet. It's quite a natural thing for a horse to be very claustrophobic around his nose. If you ever um, have seen footage, for example, on like a National Geographic channel, where a, a zebra might be attacked by a predator. What the lion or the predator would often do is jump on the back of the prey animal and try and flex the nose of the animal laterally and pull it over. So horses feel very, very vulnerable when we have them by the nose. We've got the most leverage there than any other part of their body, which is why, why we actually put the halter there so we can control them. So he is feeling a little bit trapped by the nose piece of the halter. Have the horse go around you from a close range circling, sideways in the circle. Also, can you send your horse around and rest your stick on their back? Gentle the horse, have the horse used to movement Have your horse used to movement around him and have the horse maintain gait and direction. This horse is actually showing a really nice arc on the circle here. He's got his nose tipped towards Mark and his body softly bent around the circle. It's quite an accepting way of going, which is it's quite nice to see. Initially when he um, started to play with him like this, the horse was quite tight through the neck and trying to push his shoulders in towards Mark. So it's nice to see that he can maintain this soft body position even with the rhythm of the string over his back. That's a really nice gesture when the horse lowers his head. It's a respectful um, gesture and shows acceptance. Direct our horse. Now each time from now on, I'm gonna stop my horse facing the trailer. So the trailer has to be comfort for the horse. I'm going to squeeze him through this, or send him through this gap. And just move around the tailgate. So can I send my horse 
from different angles around the trailer. That was nice that the horse was willing to choose to step over the tailgate rather than choose to step into Mark's space. Can I move my feet? And again, that was pretty nice. He didn't choose the option of running through Mark's space. And back the other way. It's interesting to notice this horse, when he's actually thinking down to his feet, he's very aware of where his feet are, and he's actually very smart on his feet. When he's not thinking down to his feet, he's pretty clumsy. But when he's thinking, he's more coordinated. Now what I'm doing here, I'm obviously I'm circling my horse in between myself and the trailer just to have him, one, to slightly take a little bit of starch from the horse. So one is to cause the horse to get used to the trailer. Used to tight gaps. But from now on, I'm going to go up to the trailer, ask him to go through a tight gap, and always make sure now that I can disengage the hindquarter and have the horse face myself or the trailer. A horse in the wild has what we call a flight distance, which is a distance greater than that of its predator. So for example, if a, four, a horse could run 400 metres, or his, if a predator could run 400 metres, the horse would normally be able to run quite easily 440 metres, which is to be able to outrun the predator. So when a horse gets a fright, they would usually run their instinctive flight distance. By having a horse go through a difficult space and then yield his hindquarters, we're causing him to stop, turn and think in a much shorter, shorter space than his instinctive flight distance. So just see now if I can send my horse up over the tailgate. That was a really nice try. And what I would like to for the horse to be able to do is have all four feet walk over the tailgate. Good. And when he does, reward the try. It's important to reward small tries often. There's a saying that confidence turns into curiosity. As this horse is becoming more and more confident about the horse trailer, he's starting to become curious, so he's trying to look in and investigate the float as he goes past. So he's starting to become curious now that he's getting more confident. So he's wanting to look in and go, well, what's in there? So his curiosity is getting the better of him. So the reason why I'm continuing here, he hasn't put all four feet on from both sides yet. There he's pushing on me. I'd like the horse not to push. It's really nice. He just walked over the tailgate. So now I'm going to ask my horse, can he possibly go onto the trailer? That was a good try. When the horse is trying, and reward the try. We take all the pressure off. If we were to try and send the horse on now while he's trying, that would almost be like punishing the horse for attempting to investigate the trailer. So we make 
the right things very, very comfortable. We make the wrong things less comfortable. So the trailer has to be a comfortable place, not a place of concern. And Mark's taking the horse away from the float to take all the pressure off to reward that good try. looking for is a try that was slightly better than the last one. And we allow him to come on and off. If we were to punish the horse for coming off, he may feel like he's trapped. So we have to allow him to retreat as often as he wants to retreat and then ask him to go back in again. So we don't stop the retreat but we keep asking him to go back in. So we never want him to feel like he's trapped. So for this horse, the tailgate wasn't too much of a bother, but the actual pressure of the top of the float and the sides of the float closing in on him are causing him a bit of bother. So the noise, and the tailgate aren't a problem. And that was pretty much evidenced by him going on the box fairly easily and being quite confident if he knocked a cavaletti or when he knocked the drum, that the noise and that feeling didn't particularly bother him. He says, I'm just not sure about this roof closing in on me and these sides closing in on me. Looks a bit tight. If you're in the market for a horse float or looking at purchasing a horse float, that was a good try. That's the best he's done so far. Now just here, it's important for my timing to be right. I, that was a try, but I don't want to teach him to come out when he would like. So I'm going to ask my horse to go back on again. To try and get my timing so I can reward the horse for the try. Now just there. Good. I'm looking for him to relax. Now there, if he relaxes, I'll accept that as a try. 